and Reunion Arena, but only for one team. The Final Four Hall of Heroes are legendary figures in the game, and Memphis State has a budding legend of its own in point guard Andre Turner, whose last second shot in overtime beat UAB last Sunday, making the teeniest tiger of them all the toast of Beale Street. If one heart stopper wasn't enough, Dana Kirk's Little General gave an encore performance Thursday night against Boston College, waiting till the final tick of the clock to save the day once again with his radar jumper. Taking a page from Memphis State's book, Oklahoma has supplied heroes and heroics of its own in tournament play. With All-American Wayman Tisdale's overtime, now it's in, now it isn't, now it is basket. With three seconds left, beating upstart Louisiana Tech and proving again, where there's a Wayman, there's a way, and a will to win it all. Mr. T has the best turnaround jumper in the college game and can be a pain in the paint. Meanwhile, Memphis State's All-American Keith Lee is normally the straw that stirs the drink. Plagued by foul trouble, Lee has struggled for his points and faces a big test today in the Big Red Wrecking Crew. Who will pick up the coveted tickets to the Final Four? The Memphis State Tigers or the Oklahoma Sooners? The answer coming up as CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Championship continues with the Midwest Regional Finals from Dallas, Texas. Destination Dallas will be the byword for next year's Final Four. But today, Reunion Arena hosts the Midwest Regional Finals between the Memphis State Tigers and the Oklahoma Sooners. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Lever. Long time since these teams have been in the round of eight for Oklahoma. you got to go back to 1947 when they lost in the finals to Holy Cross. And for Memphis State, 1973, Gene Bartow's team that fell to UCLA in St. Louis. With me once again is James Brown. We've talked already on the pregame show a great deal about Keith Lee, but the fact remains for two of these three tournament games, James, he's been in somewhat of a fog. You know, Frank, averaging 20 points a game, Keith Lee is a principal part, the principal part of the Memphis State offense. But he's been in the fog towards the tail end of the season and particularly in postseason play. All of that's been prompted by the fact he's picked up four quick fouls in 10 of the last 11 games, thereby limiting his effectiveness. If Memphis State hopes to go any further, Keith Lee must get on track. Well, if the piles become a factor, who do you like as far as bench strength goes? Both teams have a good score coming off the bench, Frank, but I think that Oklahoma has better multi-talented athletes coming off the bench, and I would give the nod to Oklahoma. The NCAA selection committee has done its job well because the number one and number two seats are in the finals for the right to go to Lexington, and it's coming your way on CBS Sports, home of the NCAA championship. Today's Midwest Regional Final Tournament Game is sponsored by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Nissan, we're changing our name from Datsun to Nissan. Known for high-quality cars and trucks, Datsun is now Nissan. And by Visa Cards and Traveler's Checks. Around the corner, around the world, Visa is all you need. Listen to this deal. 8.8% new truck financing from Nissan. And a great deal you can get from your Nissan Datsun dealer. You could save over $600 in interest on this Nissan. And over $1,300 on this one. Uh, Dickie, why am I doing this? So you could surprise them with the other deal. But I already did that! Do it again, Tom. 8.8 .8 from Nissan. Plus, a great deal you can get from your Nissan Datsun dealer. Because one good deal deserves another. There's a name recognized the world over. That's two for Hong Kong. It's used more than any other. Right, 9 a.m. For travel, entertaining, shopping, and cash. Curtains at eight. Eight, right. No, nine, sorry, my wife, <laughs> never mind. Need a hand? I could use three. No, that's four nights. Be decisive. Visa is welcome around the world. I married you, didn't I? <laughs> it's all you need. Introducing the amazing Minolta Maxim, the world's easiest SLR, because it alone has built-in automatic focusing. 
Look, Maxim's autofocus lets you get perfect shots before others can even focus. Change lenses. Maxim again gets the shots that used to get away. Only the human eye focuses faster. Minolta Maxim. Only from the mind of Minolta. Welcome back to Reunion Arena, Memphis State University, representing the Metro Conference in this basketball game this afternoon. No strangers to the final 16. They've been there four years in a row, but the first time in recent years in the final eight. All told, they've been in a tournament nine times, and their last appearance was last year. University of Oklahoma representing the Big Eight, founded in 1890, making their seventh tournament appearance, and they also were in the tournament last year. Now, for the introduction of the starting lineups, here's our public address announcer, Ladies Bill Melton. Southern Methodist University welcomes you to Reunion Arena for today's 1985 NCAA MetWest Regional Championship game between the Tigers of Memphis State University the Sooners of the University of Oklahoma. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. For Memphis State, at forward, a 6'10 senior from West Memphis, Arkansas, number 24, Keith Lee. Very potent offensively. For Oklahoma, at forward, a 6'9 junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Number 23, Wayman Tisdale. For Memphis State, at forward, a 6'7 junior from Memphis, Tennessee. Number 43, Baskerville Hall. The man with the showtime name is an exceptional leader with good baseline For moves. Oklahoma, at forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Number 30, Darrell Kennedy. This young man's regarded as their most improved player this year. For Memphis State, at center, seven-foot sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee, number 50, William Pepper. Developmentally, he's right on target and will be a force to continue for in Oklahoma, college. Oklahoma, at center, a six-seven sophomore from Kansas City, Kansas, number 55, David Johnson. Somewhat of a surprise starter, but he's got a reputation as a big game player. For Memphis State, at guard, a 6'5 freshman from Memphis, Tennessee, number 30, Benson Askew. A very poised freshman who's an excellent ball handler and passer. For Oklahoma, at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Gary, Indiana, number 32, Tim McAllister. He had 24 points against Memphis State when they met two years ago. For Memphis State, at guard, a 5'10 junior from Memphis, Tennessee. Number 10, Andre Turner. Cool under pressure, lightning quick, and his passes keep the big fellas happy. At guard. A 6'6 junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Number 25, Anthony Bowie. And probably the Sooners' most personal player. And introducing the head coaches for Memphis State in his 14th season, Dana Kirk. For Oklahoma, in his fifth season, Billy Tubbs. Well, neither of those uh, gentlemen has ever had the opportunity to coach a team in the final four. One of them will have that opportunity following today's game. Back with the opening tip right after this. This is a revolutionary advancement in shaving from Gillette Research. The brush. Gillette announces Brush Plus, a shaving concentrate and brush in one. A brush to lift your whiskers with the soothing warmth only a brush can give you. A concentrate with extra softeners and lubricants that are massaged deep into your beard. Or a shave that is superior. New Brush Plus from Gillette for a superior shave. Until you experience the exhilarating performance of the Mazda 626 Sport Coupe, you're missing a lot. Because only then can you fully understand how a 2-liter overhead cam engine, a 5-speed radial tires, efficient aerodynamics, and a cockpit-adjustable suspension system can all come together to create an outstanding road car experience. And at 88.45, it's also an outstanding experience in value. Mazda 626, experience it. 
Space was their dream. Space was her personal nightmare. Space drew them together, and space would tear them apart. Sunday, April 14th. Capacity crowd of almost 17,000 on hand as we get ready to tip it off. The official for the game today, Charles Vacca, Don Shea, and Hank Armstrong. With Johnson at center, Oklahoma has got a lot more beef in there. In fact, you might say it's Memphis State's Weight Watcher front line against the Beef Eater front line from Oklahoma because you look at the Johnson and Kennedy and Tisdale, you look at the three backsides that uh, you'd have to go to the NFL to find them any bigger than that, as you will see. With Oklahoma preferring the up-tempo game, Frank, I wouldn't be surprised, and indeed there they are in a man-to-man -man defense to try to get their running game in high gear. Memphis State controlling the opening tip. Keith Lee with his first shot of the game spins out on him, and Johnson grabs the rebound. Anthony Bowie handling the ball down court to Kennedy. Oklahoma, the leading scoring team in the nation as Johnson drives for the basket. We get a whistle and a foul. And look who it's on. Keith Lee. The other night against Boston College, he picked up three in the first five minutes and 14 seconds. Again, you won't find Oklahoma being bashful as a big fella. David Johnson takes it right to Keith Lee. You're going to find Oklahoma doing that all day long, especially the big guy, the seven-footer, William Bedford. Was that a ticky foul, you think? Very light action foul. Very light action. Kennedy with the shot and the rejection by Keith Lee. And Memphis State down quickly. Andre Turner. That's apparently his spot. Same spot where he hit the game winner the last two games out against UAB and Boston College. Has really brought his game under control, and he's got plenty of offense. He and Tim McAllister really ought to cause problems for each other. Johnson trying to penetrate that time on Lee. There was contact, but no foul. Johnson gets the shot away, and Lee skies for the rebound for Memphis State. And Keith Lee throws it away. Frank, I think it's going to be very important for Keith Lee to take his time and get into the flow of the game, not try to do so much right off the bat. That perhaps is one of the reasons why he's gotten into early foul trouble. Get the adrenaline flowing. Each team with its best record in history. The Tigers, 30 and 3, Oklahoma, 31 and 5. Game just about a minute and a half old. Memphis State leading 2-0. And again, Memphis State in a 2-3 zone, principally to protect their big men, to keep them from foul trouble. They are very weak on the bench, don't have any height. Oklahoma with four players, four starters, averaging in double figures. McAllister looking inside. Shot is short by Kennedy. And Bedford, the seven-footer, takes it off the glass. Here's Andre Turner. 5-10, will of the wisp. Bedford had a career high the other three the other night against Boston College with 23 points. Foul called away from the ball. It's going to be on Johnson. Well, take a look at the big bodies being thrown around. David Johnson, number 55, looks as if he weighs 250. Keith Lee at about 215 has got a very strong upper torso. He's going at it saying, hey, I'm here too. Lee has gained 41 pounds since his freshman year at Memphis State. He was all legs. Again, Lee has the shot rim out on him important for Keith not to get down on himself both shots are right there both teams like to run and McAllister ties it for Oklahoma and there's a guy that I thought would give Andre Turner a little bit of a problem McAllister staying 6-3 Andre Turner at 5-10 has got blazing speed but he's going to have to contend with the height and the jumping ability of Tim McAllister last time a team that led the nation in scoring won the NCAA championship you have to go back to Loyola in 1963 Lee Having trouble controlling it. Again, in early going, we see how much Memphis State is trying to go to Keith Lee to get him on track early. You can see his foot on the line. I think Memphis State would be wise to get everyone involved in the offense, maybe not go to Keith so much early in the going to allow him to get down on himself. Lob goes inside to Tisdale. That's the first time he's touched the basketball. Holmes with the rebound. Turner gets it down quickly. Askew, the freshman, puts it up. Bedford missing on the tip and try, and the loose ball is saved from going out of bounds by Bowie of Oklahoma. Down it comes to McAllister, to Johnson. Inside, Kennedy. Double clutch action, the tip and try. 
missed by Bowie. And it's Memphis State running with Turner. Off to Bedford. Seven-footer loses control. We've got an offensive foul. Well, take a look at number 55. David Johnson, again, sacrificing his body, but he's got an awful lot of body, and as you talked about those big rear ends, he's got a lot of cushion to protect himself when he hits the floor. Johnson listed at 230, but I think he left that behind a long time ago. <laughs> no pun intended, huh? <laughs> I don't know. This is such a big game. Most, most of these teams look a little nervous. We're uh, three minutes plus into the contest, and only four points scored. Look how badly they've been shooting. Well, just, just as we say it, Daryl Kennedy drills it from outside. The adrenaline is flowing. Both teams recognize what's on the line, and the fans are behind them. They're pumped. Both coaches trying to get to the final four for the very first time. Baskerville Holmes inside. Askew with a nice fake. And the freshman is fouled by McAllister. Now, Frank, that's what I was talking about in terms of the other players on Memphis State getting involved as McAllister tries to plead his case to the official. The other players on Memphis State need to get involved in the offensive end, taking some of the pressure away from Keith Lee and allowing him to gradually get into the flow of things and not press so hard. Vincent Askew will go to the free throw line. They didn't think this youngster would be as good as he is as a freshman. But he has come on and done a great job filling the shoes of uh, Doom Haynes. Dana Kirk lost three starters from his team a year ago. This 6'5 freshman is from Memphis, as are 11 of the 12 players on the Memphis team. Well, Vincent Askew is well known in the state of Tennessee, but his reputation undoubtedly will grow. A real big surprise in early season play because he is such a multi-talented player. The lone exception to the uh, Memphis situation is David Jensen, a backup who lives in Greenville, South Carolina, but even he was uh, born in Memphis, and his grandparents live in Memphis. Askew gets the free throw. It's a 4-3 Oklahoma lead. From deep in the corner, long-range bomb from Tim McAllister, the 6-3 sophomore from Gary, Indiana. And if the supporting cast in Oklahoma can continue to score, then things will open up on Wayman Tisdale. He's drawing double-team coverage. Bedford going inside to Holmes, and Holmes doing a nice job posting up and getting his first two for the game. Again, three-quarters court pressure by Memphis State. They're going to drop back into the 2-3 zone. Memphis State's been doing a good job uh, keeping the ball out of the hands of Wayman Tisdale. They haven't been able to push it in there, James. Again, he's been getting double coverage on the inside. To take a look at Askew helping out. I believe it was Askew touched it last. It'll be Oklahoma's ball in the front court. As that time, they tried to brute force it into Wayman. Dana Kirk, the head coach of Memphis State in his sixth year, 49 years old. David Johnson. Johnson making only his eighth start of the year. He started quite a few games in midseason, but he hasn't started all oh, a good seven or eight games. But Again, they figure they need the size, I guess. Very important for Oklahoma not try and force the ball inside the way Tisdale. McAllister bombs away from the corner. Johnson with the follow. That's what they've been doing effectively. The zone allows and provides gaps and opens in the middle. The other players in Oklahoma have to cut to those gaps and make themselves a scoring threat. 8-5 advantage for the Sooners, who are ranked number one in this particular region. And Memphis State ranked number two. Later this afternoon, the first and second seeds in the East, Georgetown and Georgia Tech will be. Traveling call. Good defensive help out that time by number 30, Darrell Kennedy. Excellent defensive rotation on the part of Oklahoma. Memphis State has already turned it over four times. We've got 14 minutes, 52 seconds left to play in the first half, and the Sooners lead it 8 to 5. If I thought that no one cared about the things I do in life, well, I'd still care about working hard and making it turn out right. Made in America, that means a lot to me. Oh, I believe in America and American quality. Here's to you, America, my best I give to you. Anheuser-Busch is the same.
personal commitment to quality that has kept our family of beers the finest in the world for over a hundred years. Here's to you, America, my best I give to you. Somebody still cares about quality. Anheuser-Busch. Frank Labor with James Brown back at Reunion Arena in Dallas nine days ago. We started with 64 teams. We are now down to the final eight. And as they line up, you'll see that three are from the Big East, three from the ACC, and the other two are here. Oklahoma representing the Big Eight and the Metro Conference represented by Memphis State. Oklahoma has not turned it over yet, but neither team shooting well. Oklahoma 36% and uh, Memphis State 33%. Oklahoma is the only school left in the tournament west of the Mississippi River. Their coach, uh, Billy Tubbs, in his fifth year, Big A Coach of the Year, two years running, and that's one reason. You got a guy like McAllister. Well, I tell you, these athletes on Oklahoma are really neutralizing the big fellow Bedford in the middle by connecting with those short jumpers. Oklahoma with its biggest lead at 10 to 5 inside to Holmes. Holmes doing a good job posting up against Kennedy. That's the second one he's hit in there. And again, you take a look at the wrinkle that Dana Kirk has got. He's got him going to other players other than Keith Lee. Tim McAllister knocking down his fourth basket from outside. And it's 12 to 7, Oklahoma. Easy to understand why Tim McAllister was the Big 8 newcomer of the year last season. As we mentioned, he had a big outing against Memphis State when these two teams met in Memphis two years ago, scoring 24 points. Keith Lee has put it up three times and has come back three times. Nice steal by Askew. Andre Turner, two on one break. Turner puts it up, can't get it. Bedford, one follow, two follows, and is fouled the second time around. Excellent three-on-one break this time. Turner might have dished the ball off to his right. He had a clear man ask you on the other side, but take a look when the rebound comes off. There's Bedford. The nice thing about Bedford, he doesn't put the ball on the floor. He goes straight back up and draws the foul. Only slight mistake he made was fading away. A little mismatch there you may have noticed with Turner driving on Tisdale. Well, he actually drew the defense in the form of Tisdale to him. Could have kicked it off to the right, had a wide open teammate. He could have had an easy layup. Bedford, 66% free throw shooter. He has had a tendency to either be outstanding or just absolutely disappear in some of Memphis State's games this year. First, he had the big night the other night against Boston College when they kept getting the ball inside to him. Well, his confidence has really been elevated, and as I mentioned before, potential. He's one guy that will not be accused of not having developed his potential because he is right on target. He's moving along well. Seven-foot sophomore hits them both and brings Memphis State to within three of Oklahoma at 12 to 9. Daryl Kennedy in the corner. Again, look at the 2-3 zone of Memphis State. It's a passive, packed-in one. They're daring Oklahoma to take the outside shot, and Tisdale has got two people around him whenever he's in the middle. They better not dare McAllister too much. He's at four out of five. Johnson getting the shot away, and we get a foul call underneath. With so much attention being concentrated on Tisdale, as you take a look at Billy Tubbs talking about their offensive rotation, Johnson, David Johnson, is doing a nice job of moving into the gaps in the zone offense, or rather the zone defense, and is being very effective at coming up with the offensive rebounds. Second foul, as you saw, on the seven-footer Bedford. And Johnson on the free throw line for the Oklahoma Sooners. Thus far, the two All-Americans have not really been a factor in this game. The supporting cast has really played well. Memphis State has really gotten a lot more contribution from his backcourt in postseason play than their frontcourt, and the frontcourt is a screen. Turner has been spectacular since midseason for the Memphis State Tigers. He has carried this club. Keith Lee. Oh, he can't get one to go out. That's three he's had. Circle the rim at least twice and curl out on him. Now the opponent that Keith Lee will be battling right now is his confidence not to lose it. Tisdale with a miss. He hasn't done anything either. Kennedy with a follow. And a foul called on Bedford, and that is three on the seven-foot center of Memphis State. 
I indicated at the top of the show how the Oklahoma players came over and mentioned to me that they were not going to be intimidated by the big fella. They were going to take it right to him. And Daryl Kennedy, the Adrian Dantley-like player on the inside, goes right up. And even though it was a very questionable call, you'll get those kind of calls in your favor if you go up with the power move. Becton checks into the game for Memphis State. Willie Becton, he's a good outside shooter. 6'5 senior. What we've seen here in the early going, they're going to call it pretty close. Well, that's one down for Memphis State if you're thinking in terms of what Oklahoma's trying to accomplish. They've got one big guy out of the way, so that neutralizes that height advantage across the front line. Darrell Kennedy, who's averaged 15.7 per game and is a 79% free throw shooter, gets them both. And Oklahoma has its biggest lead. 15 to 9. Keith Lee 0 for 4 from the field. Now the pressure is on Keith Lee to start to contribute offensively with Bedford out. You've got Lee and Tisdale going head to head, and there is an All-American move by Keith Lee as you had the two consensus All-Americans working against each other. The thing that worked well for Keith Lee, take a look at how he feels the pressure of Tisdale on his back. He lets the pressure tell him where he is, shows him nice ball fake, and his history from there. Excellent inside post move. The foul is on Anthony Bowie, his first, and Lee will have the opportunity to complete the three-point play. You can't believe if you watch this youngster from his freshman year on how much weight he has gained, how much bigger he looks. Well, that three pointer has really got to help him confidence wise now. Six point lead cut to three. Oklahoma 15, Memphis State 12. 12 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Johnson knocks one down from the corner. 6-7 sophomore from Kansas City, Kansas. Gets his second basket. He is, as we mentioned, a big game player. The bigger the game, the better he seems to go. And Johnson fouling Lee. Very foolish foul on the part of David Johnson. Again, the big fella trying to show that he's strong, but he paid the price with a dumb foul. Take a look as he's starting to push on Keith Lee. What's he trying to do? you got to either get in front of him or play behind, but not show folks how strong you are and pick up a foul. He's such an important part of the Oklahoma game plan. Second personal foul for Johnson. Keith Lee with the turnaround gets the bounce. Lee has his second basket. He's been averaging 19.8 this season, but just over 14 points a game in the tournament. Well, you said the other day that Keith Lee is a big TV player. He normally is. Bowie gets his first basket. Memphis State down quickly. Turner with a little delay move. Ball batted around the backboard, and we get a foul called underneath. I think they're going to call it on Beckton. Willie Beckton picks up his first personal foul. Some real banging going on underneath the basket there. 19 to 14, Oklahoma. And the Sooners will have it to throw in. Oklahoma has now won nine games in a row. Of course, won the Big A, won the tournament. It's been quite a region. Three of the four teams ranked in the top ten. We had two great games on Thursday night. Bowie with a nice soft touch from outside. Outside of Walter Berry from St. John's, they say that Bowie was the most recruited junior college player in the country last year. So he's just in his first year for Oklahoma. A major league prospect. The young man is totally powerful. Lee with the turnaround gets it. Lee is warming to the occasion now with seven points. One of the things that's helping Lee as we take a look at this full court pressure by Memphis State is that with Bedford out, Bedford is such a space eater and is drawing so much attention, the middle is not quite as clogged now, and Keith Lee has got some operating room. Tisdale has not scored in this game yet. Kennedy with the miss, Lee with the rebound. Last time these two clubs met, Lee had 22 points, Tisdale had 12. Yeah, Lee's hungry, he wants the ball. Memphis State won that game by four. Lee putting it up again, Holmes tipping it up twice. Three times, ball to the floor. And it'll be a jump ball. And the arrow pointing in the direction of the University of Oklahoma. Love to see it, love to see it. Keith Lee and Kennedy both down on the floor after knocking each other down. They recognize there's nothing more than competitive hustle. Here come the Sooners. Turner with a great defensive play. And Lee saves it from going out of bounds. 
Turner shooting a glance over at Dana Kirk on the Memphis State bench. Keith Lee has scored Memphis State's last seven points. After starting very slowly, he's got the basketball again. Lee reaching high to pull it down and sends it back outside to Turner. Memphis State is going to continue to go to Keith Lee, and David Johnson is playing kind of gingerly because he's got those two fouls. He's going to have to put a hand in Keith Lee's face. There's Lee inside, rejected underneath the basket. Offensive foul on Lee. His second. A little bit of an acting job on the part of Johnson, but it worked. Take a look at them banging around. Johnson turns around. Very light foul call. And the pros, that would not have been called. But you got to give Johnson a little bit of credit as he turns around and both be planted. Excellent smart move. 9.47 left to play in the first half here in Dallas. It's Oklahoma 21, Memphis State 16. For 1985, Mercedes-Benz moves beyond disc brakes to brakes that think. The Mercedes-Benz anti-lock braking system, a computer-regulated system that automatically modulates braking pressure up to 10 times a second. So even in sudden braking, on a slippery wet surface, you retain precise steering control. The Mercedes-Benz anti-lock braking system. The best field in tournament golf. One of the tour's most demanding courses. The Tournament Players Championship, beginning March 29th on CBS Sports. Welcome back to Reunion Arena in Dallas. Well, Keith Lee has started to warm up now with the seven points, though he's picked up two fouls. And the question is, when, when will Wayman Tisdale get going? He uh, has had a couple of shots, missed them both. He has not scored. Coach Dana Kirk of Memphis State is playing the odds, Frank. He's letting that 2 3 zone sit back in there to cut off the inside action of Wayman Tisdale, recognizing how much a major part of the offense he is, forcing Oklahoma to try and win from the outside. Oklahoma has been successful so far connecting. Tisdale has scored in double figures in 99 of the 101 games that he has played for Oklahoma. He is the only man in college basketball history to be a consensus first team All American three straight years from his freshman year on. And Tisdale missing that shot. Normally that's his baby, that soft turnaround jumper. That's what won the ball game the other night. Beckton buries it. Willie Beckton who spent the first two years of his career at St. Louis University before transferring to Memphis State. And of course, uh, he lives in Memphis State as well. So Memphis State has now sliced Oklahoma's lead down to three at 21-18 as we hit the nine-minute mark. Tim McAllister to Bowie. Up. Tisdale. First basket of the game on the baby hook. The key to that play was Tisdale moving as soon as he saw the shot was released to an effective rebounding positioning and use his nice strength. He got quick on quick with Turner, matched off with uh, Anthony Bowie. Oh, Bowie's got the height advantage there. Bailey has come into the game at center for Memphis State and throws the ball away. So there's the latest substitution by Memphis State with Bedford in foul trouble with three on the bench. Dwayne Bailey, a 6'9 freshman, number 42, is checked in. Pressure situation for a freshman who really hasn't played all that much this year. Still learning an awful lot about the game, but he's got to improve in a hurry. Baskerville Holmes got a hand on it, but couldn't tip it away. McAllister, he's been hot from outside, missing that one. Andre Turner with the pull-up J does not go. Rebound, Bailey. Didn't look like a freshman the way he played that, did he? There's one way to improve your stock in the eyes of the coach. Bailey has not received much playing time, as you mentioned, because he's not a very good scorer. 
but Memphis State really needs him for the height depth on the bench. Dana Kirk told us yesterday when he takes one of his big guys out or has to, Bedford or whoever, they'll go to more of a pressure defense, and that's what they're doing right now at Memphis State, forcing some turnovers. Nice pass from Turner, but Askew was not ready for it. Give the credit to Tim McAllister on defense. Turner committed himself by leaving his feet. McAllister was right on top of him, forcing him to change his mind and throw the ball away. Askew will come out at Dwight Boyd, number 31, another freshman, 6'3". Also from Memphis, checks in for the Tigers. Now, as the momentum shifts towards Memphis State, it will be interesting to see how Oklahoma reacts defensively. Willie Becton. That's what he did the other night against Boston College. Becton, the long-range bomber, hits for the second time. And the foul's going to be called on Becton. That's his second. Interesting to note that since Bedford left the game, Memphis State has outscored Oklahoma 16 to 10. How do you figure it? Again, that inside has opened up a lot more so, Frank. I mentioned that Bedford is such a big guy. He's a space eater, and he's also drawing attention. With the offensive middle open, the guys are able to utilize their speed and get inside. Keith Lee is back in. Memphis is now over the limit, so it'll be one and one for Oklahoma the rest of the first half. David Johnson on the free throw line. As far as the foul situation for the Sooners they have one more to give before Memphis State will benefit from the one and one Johnson with the miss on the second and Turner comes up with it a two point game and a chance for Memphis State to tie inside to Lee double team by Johnson and Kennedy and Oklahoma steals the ball McAllister going to Kennedy Keith Lee might have been better served to use that touch pass back out to his teammates, something that Patrick Ewing does so well. When two guys are around him, he kicks that ball back out very quickly. McAllister from the corner. He's obviously got a lot of confidence in that shot. Didn't go. We get a foul underneath the basket, and I believe it will be on Tisdale. Little elbow job by Wayman, who has to be the really the friendliest, the most personal, personable superstar, I think, in college basketball. Couldn't find a nicer person, and... That foul perhaps was a manifestation of frustration on his part. Really important when a guy is not into the offensive flow of things like Tisdale, and he is such a major part of their offense, that he works on the other parts of the game, getting his points off the board, playing tough defense. Keith Lee inside, and that was no contest. As Kennedy backed off him, and Keith Lee comes up with his fourth basket of the first half, and we are tied at 24. So Memphis State has come back. From as much as six down to knot it up. Second time we've been tied. And as a result of that, the zone defense is much stronger. Bowie with a little double clutch action against Bailey underneath. And Bowie will go to the free throw line. First foul on Dwayne Bailey. This is why it's so important for players defensively to maintain their position. Had Bailey not left his feet, he could have actually drawn the foul, but he left his feet, committed himself, the official caught him in the act. Bowie leads the Sooners in assists. Had a great Big A tournament, which propelled the Sooners into the NCAA fray. Misses them both. And now Memphis State has a chance to take the lead for the first time since they scored the opening basket of the game. Boyd inside, Keith Lee, yes! for Lee. Look at the pressure that Memphis State is putting on here. And we're going to get an offensive foul called on Linwood Davis of Oklahoma, who has just come into the game. You don't break the press with the dribble. You break the press with passes. Just take a look. Linwood Davis doesn't make very many mistakes, but watch as he gets surrounded by the big tree that time. He tries to push his way straight ahead. He's built like a boxer, but didn't utilize his smarts that time trying to kick the pass out. Linwood Davis is the Sooners' normal starting point guard, but uh, he's coming off the bench today as Billy Tubbs decided to go with the big man, David Johnson, in the middle, which put Bowie in the backcourt. Beckton on the free throw line. Psychology is such an important part of the game. It'll be interesting to see how Oklahoma reacts, knowing that they are so dependent psychologically on Tisdale scoring. With them not scoring from the outside now, it'll be interesting to see who picks up the leadership role. 
Wayman Tisdale, big rebound. Tisdale has still scored only two points here in the first half, which has five minutes and 55 seconds remaining. And Memphis State slowing the pace down just a little bit. They're getting Oklahoma out of their running game. Sooners have averaged better than 90 points per game. Number one offense in Division I of the nation. They can light it up. That zone defense of Memphis State is a lot stronger now that they're scoring and they have a momentum in their favor. They're moving quicker. They have a hands up. They're playing much more aggressively. From outside, Anthony Bowie. You want to beat the zone? That's not a bad way to do it. That young man is the truth. Really impressed with his overall talent and skills. He's a true athlete. 1 2 2 zone by Oklahoma now. Boyd with the pull up jumper. And Tisdale comes up with another huge rebound. Pass down to Bowie. Taken out of his hands by Becton. Clean steal by Memphis State. Now again, a 1-2-2 two, two zone defense. As we take a look at the rebounding totals, only three rebound disparity there. Difference. Keith Lee, double team, gets the shot away. Becton with the tip, doesn't go. Here comes OU, three on two break. McAllister, touch pass by Tisdale to Bowie, who scores. Excellent unselfish move by Tisdale, who could have tried to help his own confidence by going in for the shot, had a wide open teammate. Nice play. And one of the Memphis State Tigers, looks like Becton may have been shaken up on that last play. As we get a timeout with four minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the first half here at Reunion Arena in Dallas. And it's a tight one as we expected with Oklahoma leading by one. You could find yourself impressed just by the clean aerodynamic styling of the Mazda 626 Sport Coupe. But looking further, you find a driver's seat that adjusts six ways. Instrumentation that is complete and functional in a cockpit adjustable suspension system. And at 8845, you can't help but be impressed by its outstanding value. But the most lingering impression is when you experience its performance. Mazda 626. Experience it. Family, I'm not going to waste the day watching sports. Instead, I will painstakingly evaluate our insurance to make sure we're saving every penny we can. Allstate makes it easy to compare insurance. Just drive over to Sears and drop the whole mess off at Allstate. We'll do everything we can to save you money. Meanwhile, you just browse. Hey, you guys watching the game, huh? No. no. We're painstakingly evaluating our insurance. Oh. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. This one's for the national title. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. Next Sunday, live on CBS Sports. Coming up at halftime, Dick Stockton, Bill Raftery in our studio in New York. We'll have a preview from Brent Musburger and Billy Packer in Providence on the Eastern Regional Final, which will follow this one. And then an Okie at Georgia Tech. That's one that got away from Billy Tubbs. Mark Price, the great guard from Georgia Tech, who lead his team against the number one seeded team of the tournament, the Georgetown Hoyas. Memphis State inbounding. Askew lost the ball. Clark has come into the game for the University of Oklahoma for the very first time, working the backcourt. The young Sooners man. lead it by one. The young man from Brandywine, Maryland, is known for his outside shooting. That was Clark with his first shot of the game, and Askew, who created the turnover, gets the rebound. Thus far, Oklahoma has outshot Memphis State 48% to 39%. Oklahoma went back to the man-to-man -man defense, and yet that zone was working so well for them because they really didn't give Keith Lee an awful lot of operating room. Kind of surprised to see him go back to the man. Now, Lee had nothing for the first four minutes of this game as OU turns it over again. And all of a sudden, Memphis State has had no problems at all getting the ball inside to it. I tell you, this is nothing more than token pressure that Memphis State is applying on Oklahoma, and they're starting to get rattled as a result. The foul will be on Tim McAllister, his second. And Turner will go to the free throw line with a one and one. Again, McAllister, let's take a look to see if his feet were firmly planted. No, he was still moving, plus trying to get that right leg in there. Excellent call by the official. Tigers lead it by one, and Turner with an opportunity to add to that. Turner, just a junior, even though this team loses Keith Lee. They got a lot of ammunition. 
for next year, as is the case with Oklahoma, even though they might lose Tisdale, who is only a junior, but is rumored to be at least thinking about the NBA. Bowie from outside. Lee collects the rebound. Well, he's really settled down after getting those two early fouls and not scoring. First three or four minutes, missing his first four shots. This is his team, and again, the widespread offense is working to his advantage because he's able to maneuver and manipulate one-on-one -on -one inside. They're looking for Lee every time down the floor. He's being guarded by Kennedy inside right now, and Kennedy's got to be careful, as does David Johnson. Johnson has moved over now to pick him up. Johnson's got two fouls on him. Johnson doing a good job tipping it away from Lee. Here come the Sooners with a chance to recapture the lead with three minutes left to play in the first half. McAllister to Clark. Lobs it into Johnson. Tipped out of his hands by Turner. Two on one break with Boyd and Turner. Hawk Boyd takes it to the hole and scores. We talk about practice habits being so important to a ball player in game situations. David Johnson did not grasp that ball firmly and cut down and keep it around letter height. Those quick guys from Memphis State can really steal that ball as you saw, six to one. And Memphis State creating problems for McAllister. Memphis State with a three-point advantage. They were down by six earlier. Shot blocked. Out of bounds by Boyd. McAllister trying the jumper from the corner from 20 feet, and it is rejected by the freshman from Memphis. Well, McAllister telegraphed what he was going to do that time. Bowie will inbound it. Two minutes, 12 seconds left in the half. Johnson saw an opening in the paint and traveled. Once again, Oklahoma turns it over. Again, another example of why it's difficult to dribble the ball in tight against the zone when you've got so many players around. You've got to put that ball up if you're in good shooting range. Oklahoma trying a little pressure of its own, and Bailey throws the ball away. Dana Kirk up off the bench. Dana had his guys out here at 8 o'clock walking through their offense this morning. He likes to practice on the day of the game. Very light workout. Clark comes out, and Kennedy comes back into the game. Memphis State has turned it over ten times. Oklahoma eight times. Alley -oop. What a play! Warman Tisdale. Frank, I'd say that was rather mean. Tisdale with only his second basket of the first half. It's a thing of beauty. Watch it again. They say he's 6'9". I think he's closer to 6'8". But look at his leaping ability. That makes him 6'9 or 6'10". And the foul was on Keith Lee. So that is three fouls on Lee, three fouls on William Bedford, who is sitting on the bench. And Lee will come out with a minute 55 left to play in the half. And Tisdale with a chance to finish off the three-point play. And... Tie this game up one more time. Very nice job by Wayman Tisdale of not getting overly involved because he wasn't scoring well on the offensive end. Taking the opportunities when they came to him, that was an excellent example of it. Now they've gotten rid of Keith Lee. So both Lee and the other big man, Bedford, are on the bench for Memphis State. And the Tigers in no hurry right now with those two guys on the bench. They know Oklahoma can light it up in a big hurry, so they're going to wait for the Sooners to come out and get them. Well, the defense is going to have to force the action now with the score tied. Oklahoma's got to come out and put some pressure on the ball. Oklahoma, the only school west of the Mississippi, remaining in the field of eight. Bowie wisely respecting the speed of Andre Turner by laying off of him. There's a steal by McAllister. Two. Oklahoma grabs the lead. McAllister comes up with a big steal and scores his 10th point of the first half. Good anticipation by McAllister as well as knowing what the opposition's tendencies are. They knew that they wanted to get the ball back in the hands of Andre Turner. Once again, Turner walking it down the floor right in front of Billy Tubbs, the Oklahoma coach. Now, Dwayne Bailey is making himself wide on the inside. On the right side, as well as Baskerville Holmes, that's it. They try to go inside to them. Right now, 
Memphis State is operating with four freshmen on the floor. Holmes is the only non-freshman, and he's posted up inside. They're trying to with Kennedy. Clock ticking away, the final 15 seconds of the first half, and Oklahoma leading 33-31. Memphis State going for the last shot. Will it be Turner? It is Turner, and he gets it. Andre Turner with another buzzer beater. This one at halftime, and we are tied at 33. That's the end of the first half with the score. Memphis State 33, Oklahoma 33. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Championship will continue after this commercial and a word from your local station. Bigger engines work easy on oil. But today's smaller, higher revving engines are tougher. They can break down an oil's viscosity within 1,500 miles. That's why there's Castrol. Tests show Castrol suffers no significant breakdown of viscosity even after 5,000 miles. So use Castrol, because if you make things too hard on your engine, your engine could make things hard on you. Castrol, engineered for smaller cars. Gonna party like before It's the fancies once more Gonna stroll across the floor We'll turn it loose with a silver bullet Find it, we'll grab it, pull it Rock and roll with a cold, cool as life Paper's heavy, the weight is fine A silver bullet won't slow you down Keep it light, party like We'll turn it loose with a silver bullet tonight Coors Light Beer Renault introduces five years or 50,000 miles. Plus, protection on required maintenance. Small car protection even better than Chrysler. 550 plus on all Renaults like the Alliance Sedan, stylish Renault Encore, and 8.5, America's lowest factory financing. European technology with America's best small car protection. Only from Renault. Today's Midwest Regional Final Tournament game is sponsored by Renault, now offering 550 plus protection, the one to watch, Renault. This is CBS. News Line 9 at 5 p.m. Oklahoma City's leading team of professionals bring you the best in news, weather, and sports coverage every day. Oklahomans rely on the News Line 9 team. We bring you extensive news coverage that you can depend on. Oklahoma's only pilot reporter provides you with up-to-the-minute news throughout the state. Newsline 9, a dedicated anchor team, bringing you the best in news, weather, and sports coverage. Weekdays at 5 p.m., only on Newsline 9. At Hudeburg Dodge, we have one, and only one ambition, to be the best. What else is there? Welcome back to our studios in New York. Dick Stockton along with Bill Raftery. And, of course, we have a 33-33 tie in the Midwest Regional Final in Dallas between Memphis State and Oklahoma. And Keith Lee really went to work when William Bedford, the seven-footer, picked up his third personal foul. Well, it opened things up for him, and Johnson really stopped playing him. They went to that zone. They got the ball low. Keith Lee's very tough, that close to the best. William Tisdale didn't score for more than uh, 10 minutes of the first half. They bottled him up well. Oh, that 2-3 zone collapsed around and forced Oklahoma to shoot outside early. They did it well. Struggle in the middle. Okay, we have a women's score for you in the Eastern Regional and the first team to reach the Final Four in the Women's Championships is Old Dominion, the top seed. They defeated Ohio State today 72 to 68. So this is the way the bracket looks in the tournament. Old Dominion will now play the winner of Louisiana Tech and Northeast Louisiana as they go to the Final Four in Austin, Texas. As you know, coming up after the second half of Oklahoma and Memphis State, it'll be the big battle for the Eastern Regional Championship in Providence between Georgia Tech and top seeded Georgetown. And for more on that, let's take you up to Providence and Brent Musburger and Billy Packer. All right, Dick, thank you very much. Something a bit unusual right now. The Hoyas of Georgetown trying to come back and repeat as champions are out here. Billy, we really haven't seen them shoot around this early before a game. Well, the players say they like to shoot around when they have time, but I'd agree with you, Brent. It's been few and far between the number of games we've covered that they've been out. And, of course, there is a question about the condition of Reggie Williams' injured left ankle. 
Moments ago, he was out here shooting around. He told me he did not practice yesterday. However, the ankle has been taped. He says it feels well today and expects to play. How valuable is he? Well, remember the opening moments of the Loyola game? How Frederick the Great Hughes about to take his first shot, and Reggie Williams comes right up in his face for the left hand. He rejects that shot. The ball is passed back to the great one, who comes up, and Williams gets him a second time. Hughes did not recover, went on to shoot only four of 13. Great defensive performance. It is great defensive performance. He's a slasher on offense, but very quick defensively also. You don't play for John unless you can guard somebody. All right, let's go back to the nice warm comfort of that studio where Dick Stockton and Bill Raftery are enjoying themselves. Dick? Thank you very much, Brandon. Of course, we're going to take a little closer look and the key ingredients to Georgia Tech's success when we come back to the road to the Final Four in just a moment. By Delta to Europe. To London. It's the only place to holiday. And Delta gets you there. Quite enough. Frankfurt and Germany is the only place to have a good time. But Delta gets you there. Come to Paris. Need I say more? And Delta gets you there, too. London, Frankfurt, or Paris. The choice is yours. Mercedes-Benz unleashes the diesel experience. The stunning 190-class diesel sedan. Pure fun. Pure Mercedes-Benz. Uh, you got another set of Michelins, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, you really think they're worth more than other tires? All I know is I got 60,000 miles on my last set of XA4 tires. 60,000? I thought I was doing fine when I got 32,000 miles on my tires. I guess Michelin's are worth it. Yeah. But I got a couple of other reasons I think they're worth it. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. As far as, uh, as officials are concerned, they're there to officiate the ball game, not for the coach, uh, not for the fans. Uh, they officiate the ball game for the two teams on the floor. A person that, that is going to officiate on the college level they're going to have to prepare themselves and think of it as a profession in order to do the job. You got weight? Five, three, push, two. You've got to have a sense of humor. If a guy goes in there and he okay, says, hey, I'm here and I'm going to control this game and whatever I say is, is, is the law, then that's the type of person that won't last very long. Red. Yeah, boy. Red, 44, push. We had offensive basket interference. No basket. You know, everybody wants to win. And these kids will work hard, so therefore I think we as officials should do the same thing. You know, there's always going to be a winner and a loser, and uh, I hope that uh, they think that we don't determine the winner or the loser. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. Over the years, the basketball powers in the ACC have recruited top players from the North, but this season, Georgia Tech has built its championship team around a playmaker from a state where, as they sang in the Broadway musical, the corn grows as high as an elephant's eye. And I'm proud to be a Okie from Muskogee. Georgia Tech junior guard Mark Price is a true Okie. He's from Enid, Oklahoma, an oil and farming town in the northern part of the state. His head coach, Bobby Cremens, is a New Yorker who grew up in the South Bronx before the buildings were abandoned. When he took the tech job, Cremens was quick to adapt to the Atlanta lifestyle. The climate was a lot nicer, and I didn't have to lock everything up and put everything away, and I didn't have to carry any weapons to protect my life. And it was, um, it was just a different scene. How did a New Yorker recruit an OP to play ball in Georgia? Let's just say it took some doing. He came into my house with a green suit on, you know, with this gray hair. And, uh, you know, it was interesting. You know, I couldn't understand a whole lot he was saying with his accent that he had. I might just sit there kind of in a daze. He, you know, he, uh, he was just very unusual. 
Mark wanted to challenge of building the program. The last thing I said to him was, the greater the challenge, the greater the reward. The reward was the ACC championship and three victories thus far in the NCAA tournament. Price is the team's quarterback. If he doesn't stick you with a sharp bounce pass, as Syracuse found out, look for him to burn you with the jumper from the outside as he did to Illinois. Oh, I like the pressure. I, uh, uh, if it, a shot needs to be taken at an important time of the game, I'm the one that wants to take it. Most teams quake at the thought of playing mighty Georgetown, but both the city slicker and his country shooter feel that having come this far, they might as well give it a shot. It's a dream. We, we got a big step, though, before we go to the Final Four. I think we're still a year away, but when the opportunity comes, you try and take advantage of it. All right, Bill, can Georgia Tech pull the upset? Well, because of the play of Mark Price, I think they can. Okay, and we'll send you back out to Dallas for the second half of Memphis State, Oklahoma, tied at 33 after this message. Wherever you go in America, there's one source of starting power the weather's found tough to beat, the Sears Die Hard. From the original Die Hard battery to the newest, most powerful Die Hard ever made for your car, in Credicel, Die Hard is still the replacement battery more Americans have confidence in than any other. Think of it as a recommendation from a few million of your neighbors. There's more for your life at Sears. If you want a tough little pickup and new low 8.8% financing rates, check out the one that's built for tough, Ranger. Now your participating Ford dealer can arrange low 8.8% financing on new Ford Ranger pickups delivered by March 31st. Rate available on all Ranger models, 4x2s and 4x4s. So get on the road again in a tough Ford Ranger. Now get 8.8% financing on new Ford Rangers. Take delivery by March 31st smooth it won't even scratch this delicate surface the paper mate accupoint roller pen with a stainless steel point and metal rolling ball for remarkably smooth fine point writing the paper mate accupoint gillette foamy gel the gel that gives you more more lubricants better beard setup more lubricants for closeness and comfort get gillette foamy gel the gel that gives you more there you want to try something tough? Try taking this check to a widow with young kids. I've had to do it twice. You can imagine how I would have felt had I not kept in touch over the years and made sure that that check did what I told them it would. I wouldn't be able to face them. That's why I like being a State Farm agent. When we write life insurance, we work together with people and do it right. And like a good neighbor. And staying in touch keeps it right. State Farm is there. You, too, can be part of the action at next year's NCAA Final Four. Tickets to the 1986 championship are $46, which includes admission to the semifinals and final game in Dallas. Send your name, address, and phone number along with the cashier's check or money order to NCAA Final Four, United Missouri Bank of Kansas City, Post Office Box 1986, Kansas City, Missouri, 64141. Not more than four tickets per order, please. Your application must be received by April 15th. Welcome back to Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas. Frank Lieber along with James Brown. We're at halftime. Memphis State and Oklahoma locked at 33. And just so you don't miss anything, the pom poms were flying all over the floor. Here just a few minutes ago, great performance by both the Oklahoma and the Memphis State pom pom jobs. Memphis State's team under the direction of Sherry Ganang, and they do an outstanding job. Watch. <laughs> say this the costumes don't do them justice CBS sports coverage of the NCAA championship will continue after this commercial and a word from your local station
best drivers talks about Ford quality. Believe it or not, I'm actually riding on air. Forget about steel springs. This Continental rides on four columns of air. No other luxury car in the world, at any price, has suspension this sophisticated. You ought to feel this ride. But you don't have to drive a luxury car to give your family a smooth ride. We designed four-wheel, fully independent suspension into this Ford Tempo. See how each wheel reacts to bumps separately? You ought to feel this ride. Whether it's a luxury Continental or this Ford Tempo, we're building quality you can feel into all our suspension systems. And I think you're going to like that feeling. Ford, you'll feel the quality, because quality is job one. This is CBS. At Hudeburg Dodge, we have one, and only one ambition, to be the best. What else is there? Crockett's, Crockett Smoke Cat. Hungry for some hickory smoked sausage, hot links, pork ribs, ham, or brisket? Then get on out to Crockett's Smokehouse and get ready, get set, get buttered and sauced. Grab your knife and your fork and get going. And I don't care if it's golden brown fried okra or hot baked beans, tender smoked brisket, thick cut french fry, smoked chicken on Sunday, ham sandwich or ribs. When you come to Crockett's Smokehouse, you're going to eat good. Today's Midwest Regional Final Tournament game is sponsored by Chevrolet, who invites you to see, drive, and live today's Chevrolet. Strohs and Stroh Light, fire brewed for smoother taste. And by General Motors, extra time, extra effort, and attention to every detail. GM is committed to excellence. Welcome back once again to Reunion Arena, site of next year's Final Four. We're tied at 33, and uh, James Brown, you wonder, when Bedford went out, things picked up in that first half for Memphis State. The key when Bedford went out, Frank, was that the offensive end got more room. Keith Lee was able to operate a lot more effectively on the inside and getting his shot off. That was the key, and he's got 13 points, Keith Lee, that is, in the first half. Yep. So he's on track. Oklahoma didn't get much scoring out of their big man, uh, Wayman Tisdale. But uh, the supporting cast did a fine job. Particularly Bowie and McAllister did a very nice job of peppering those shots from the outside. And hopefully, Key, or rather, Wayman Tisdale might be able to uh, get into those gaps a little better in his own defense in the second half. Yeah, since Bedford left the game with three fouls, Memphis State has outscored Oklahoma 27 to 20. Second half underway, Memphis State in blue. Bedford is back in there and cans the first shot of the second half. So that's got to be a confidence builder for the seven-footer. Bench scoring in the first half. There's a steal. Baskerville Holmes going in for the shot. Offensive foul on Holmes. Boy, that could have been big, James. You get four points right away. We'll talk about making up for a mistake as you take a look. He loses the handle on the dribble that time, Anthony Bowie, but he gets good defensive position. That's making up for a mistake that's not sulking after you turn the ball over. Pressure defense by Memphis State to open the second half. Oklahoma gets it down. Tisdale inside. Turnaround goes. Wayman Tisdale. It took him forever to get his first basket of the game in the first half. He gets OU's first here in the second half. Tisdale. Slapping the ball out of Lee's hands and out of bounds. It belongs to Memphis State. Good defense by Wayman. With the team speed that Oklahoma has, there was no reason for their white shirts not to be back quicker that time. Turner headed last. Oklahoma's ball. Sooners have it. We're tied. In the first half, Memphis State's bench outscored Oklahoma 9 to nothing. And in the head-to-head -head matchup, Lee, 13 points and six rebounds. Tisdale, five points and seven rebounds. That's in the first half. Kennedy launches the jumper. Lee out fighting Tisdale for that rebound. So the two All-Americans now getting into the spirit of things here and working each other over pretty good. And Oklahoma back to the man-for-man -man defense. Lee looking for the turnaround jumper against Johnson, and Tisdale collects it off the window. Again, Oklahoma with a chance to unbreak the tie. Sooners' biggest lead in the first half was six. Memphis State's biggest lead, three. 
We've been tied four times, and the lead has changed hands five times. Tisdale short with the jumper as someone got a piece of that. And Lee gets another board. Andre Turner looking inside to Bedford. He's guarded by Tisdale. And Kennedy is on Lee. Bedford gets the shot away. And Tisdale will pick up the foul. For the All-American, his second. Important for Tisdale to exercise a little smartness on the defensive end. It's going to be very difficult for him to try and block the shot of the seven-footer. The best thing to do is to try to get a hand in his face and try and obstruct his vision. Oklahoma relies so much on Tisdale. He's been their leading scorer in 31 of 36 games and their leading rebounder 24 times. Bedford on the line. Now three out of three from the strike. Well, of course, last year when Derek Phillips, Memphis State Center, got hurt, went down with the injury, William Bedford stepped in, did an awful lot for his confidence to get a lot of playing time, and he's really coming along nicely. And Bobby Park suffered a knee injury last year. Another senior, and Baskerville Holmes came in, claimed a starting job, and he's going to be around for a while. Baskerville is just a junior, as is Andre Turner. 37-35, Memphis State. Early in the second half. Again, look at the number of blue shirts around Wayman Tisdale on the inside. Tisdale's going to have to do a little more moving. He's trying to just post his man in that one block. Even when the ball is on the weak side, he's going to have to move into the open areas. Daryl Kennedy on top. Bowie takes the outside shot. Lee again out fighting Tisdale for the rebound. That is nine rebounds for Keith Lee. Memphis State has got two offensive weapons to utilize on the inside. Now with Bedford back in. Bedford jump shooting over Tisdale. Bedford getting his first two baskets of the game. Here's Holmes getting the turnover, and the ball is out of bounds. They say off Holmes. So again, a great recovery by Bowie. There's a great athletic play for you. Excellent hustle. Good, quick hands. There's backcourt pressure. Troubling Oklahoma some. They go to Johnson cross court down to McAllister. Tisdale with the fadeaway. Now that's when Oklahoma is at its best, Frank. When they push the ball up the court, they can take advantage of the defensive mismatches in terms of numbers and get the ball to Tisdale. But once Memphis State gets that zone defense set, then it's awfully tough to work it inside to Wayman. Memphis State by a basket. Just under 17 minutes left in the game. Lee with the turnaround. Kennedy rebound down to Bowie. Tisdale trying to save it from going out of bounds right into the hands of Bedford. And then Oklahoma turns it over. Trying to force it to Tisdale. There were two men, two white shirts on the right side of the floor that were open. Anybody's game, but it's been that way in this region. Turner almost gave it away, got it back. Bedford outside, stole it. McAllister, two on two break. McAllister fires. Does not draw iron. And it's Memphis State running the other direction. Turner trying to penetrate and swat it away by McAllister. Very loose play here. Same type of thing we saw at the start of the game. We talked about the number of leapers on this Oklahoma squad. Tim McAllister, only 6'3", but he got up nicely. Keith Lee has already taken 16 shots for Memphis State. He has hit six. Missed his first four of the game and didn't score until about five minutes deep, but then he made up for it by scoring 13 points in the first half. Tigers by two to the winner. The right to go to Lexington. And they'll face the winner coming out of the southeast in Birmingham in a semifinal game. Dana Kirk said yesterday, no question, that the winner of this game is going to be in the final game. David Johnson's really being watched. I think he's going to get in foul trouble. Referee's got a good eye on him. Memphis State bench wants a call. They don't get it. Finally, we do get the call on David Johnson for holding. Now, David Johnson should have known from the first half that the officials are going to call him awfully tight. Take a look. No reason to be muscling Keith Lee out this high. He's trying to cut his path off, preventing him from going for the ball. But look at the right elbow. He's pushing Lee away. The best thing to do is to use your body to play in front of the guy or behind. Inbounds pass is swiped. Another clean pickpocket job by Oklahoma. And here come the Sooners with a chance to tie. 
That is 16 turnovers by Memphis State. McAllister from outside. Lee with rebound number 10. Willie Beckton getting ready to come in for Memphis State. Same outside shots that OU was connecting on in the first half, not falling for him right now. Keith Lee, as Johnson that time got flattened and shot a dirty look at the referee, but didn't get the call. Again, take a look at the full court pressure by Memphis State. Token pressure, just trying to force a turnover to see if OU would get a little careless. Four-point lead will match Memphis State's biggest lead of the game. Bowie to Kennedy, who fires a whistle and a foul away from the ball on Bedford, and that is four on the Memphis State seven-footer. Well, let's see if we can catch Bedford, what he's doing on the defensive end. Number 50, again, leaning all over top of Tisdale. Actually, they were just both a lot of incidental contact on Tisdale and Bedford's part. 14 minutes, 36 seconds left to play in the game. It's Memphis State 41, Oklahoma 37. In all the universe, there's never been anything like the new size Chevy Astro. Chevy, Chevy, Astro, Astro. Chevy Astro stands alone with the only V6 available in a van. Vortec V6 power that rivals a V8. And the highest towing capacity available up to 5,000 pounds. In its size, it fits your garage. Chevy, Chevy, Astro, Astro. When it comes to new ideas in vans, nothing works like a Chevy van. Can you believe it, JT, with an $18 million contract? Sure is a long way from the playground. Think he still drinks strolls? Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. JT, Mr. Yes. Richard. Timothy. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Man. Oh. This is all right. Glad he didn't forget his friends. Oh, it's strolls. Where is the strolls? Out by the pool. The, the pool? pool? Strolls and strolites. Now that's a cooler. <laughs> Fire brewed for smoother taste. Billy D. Williams, a high-class thief. Ken Wall, a streetwise convict. Why on earth would they be working for the cops? This ought to be fun. Double Dare. Frank Lieber along with James Brown at Reunion Arena in Dallas. Fouls could be a very big factor before this one is over, James. Well, again, the front line of Memphis State in a little more foul trouble with Becker having four and Keith Lee having three. Very important that Keith Lee doesn't get into foul trouble. There's still 14 minutes remaining, and Memphis State's front line, Frank, has really been doing the job outscoring OU 34 to 18. And the matchup between the two consensus All-Americans. You saw it there. Right now, Keith Lee's getting the better of it. Bedford with a seat on the pine with four personal fouls. Oklahoma. Team that's lost only once in its last 21 games. That was at the hands of Kansas. Now trailing by four. They have not shot well since the start of the second half. They've hit only two out of seven since intermission. Bowie working it to Kennedy. McAllister will not hesitate with that shot, but it's not falling like it did in the first half. Kennedy with the follow does not go, and Turner comes up with it. Andre Turner streaking down the floor and decides not to go one and one against Bowie, but take it back outside. Boy, he is as quick running the angles, darting as anybody in the college game. Keith Lee inside, perfect pass from Turner. And Lee again hits the turnaround jumper to give him 17 points and build Memphis State to six-point lead, its biggest. A whistle and a foul called on Askew. The story right now, Frank, is the front line scoring of Memphis State. They're untracked. I mentioned before they've got 36 points now with that last basket by Keith Lee. OU has been living by the outside shot, and right now they're dying by it because no one is connecting from the outside. Oklahoma has missed its last four shots, and that's enabled Memphis State to move out to a six-point lead. Billy Tubbs looking on, the head coach of the Sooners, formerly coached at Lamar in Beaumont, Texas. McAllister from the free throw line buries it. Again, broken play offense is where OU looks the best. OU is going to have to pick up the tempo and move the ball up the court like Memphis State is doing. Turner really down quickly, trying to contain him like trying to put lightning in a bottle. Again inside to Lee. This time short with the jump shot. OU with a chance to trim the lead to two. Tisdale wants the ball. He's got it. A lot of 
battling underneath, and McAllister this time pushing Becton. And McAllister comes up with his third personal foul. Well, the non-existent rebounding that MSU have been accused of in the last few games, that's not the case today. Take a look at Willie Becton as he goes up strong, and McAllister comes over the back. You know, that's a very good point because, you know, Memphis State was even out-rebounded by a much smaller UAB team. And Boston College gave him everything they could handle despite the height disadvantage. But they're doing the job today, getting it down, in this case, to Becton, who scores. And I tell you, Frank, rebounding is as much heart and wanting it as anything. And right now, it's pretty evident that Memphis State really wants this. Six-point lead for the Tigers, trying to go to the Final Four for the first time since 1973, when they were shot down by UCLA and Bill Walton. Kennedy with the miss. And a foul called against Memphis State. Let's see who it's going to be on as Johnson went up for the shot. Lee obviously did not like the call. The lead was trying to say that the foul call was actually committed up higher. Take a look as a rebound, a loose ball here. Now they're going to call it on the little man, Turner, up high. And that's what Keith Lee is saying. The back official called the foul on Turner. That's Turner's first personal foul. Memphis State leads by six, 12 and a half minutes remaining. Into McAllister. And Keith Lee going in for the block. And Lee has just picked up his fourth personal foul. Critical foul to say the obvious with Keith Lee in foul difficulty. Coach David Kirk's got a big decision. I don't think the decision there really is anything because he's got to take him out. Take a look at Keith Lee, number 24, as he comes over for the block. They say he got him with the hand. Again, another foul of a light variety. But I think Coach Kirk is going to have to take Lee out because there's still 12 minutes remaining. That's a lot of time. So this becomes the 11th of the last 12 games that Lee has picked up at least four personal fouls. And he has fouled out four times. And he's still in there. Yeah, well, I, I really believe that Coach Kirk recognizes he's got to he's got to do something that's too big a risk to take with that much time remaining to leave Keith Lee in there with four fouls. Well, you can see the front line having problems. McAllister making both free throws. It's a four-point game at 45-41. Turner gets it down quickly. And Lee continues to play with four personal fouls. Bedford is on the bench with four personal fouls. You recall they had both of them out of there for a while in the first half and did well. Lee with the miss. Tisdale with the rebound. Kicks it out to McAllister. Trying to put a move on Andre Turner. He's got Johnson open at the free throw line. Again, the up-tempo game, that's what OU prefers. That's where they're at their best. They really need to get these athletes running. Look how well Memphis State has done off the bench. Most of that occurring in the first half when Bedford and Lee were both on the bench in foul trouble. Kicked out of bounds by Oklahoma. It'll be Memphis State's ball to throw in. Oklahoma winning more than 30 games. That's the first time a Big A team has ever accomplished that. Timeout. 11:48 left to play in this contest at Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas. It's 45-43. The Tigers lead Oklahoma. Nothing makes a truck work as hard as the Baja 1000. It's an off-road event so devastating, over half the entries never finished. But Chevy S10 worked so hard, it not only finished Baja, it won its class. Why should that interest you? Because what Chevrolet learns out in the desert could end up out in your garage. And now get low 8.8% financing on new S10 pickups in Maxi Cash. This is a limited time offer, so hurry. Now that I know that the cost of tuition isn't going to sideline my college plans, I can really enjoy my last year of high school. Introducing the new GI Bill and the new Army College Fund. If you qualify, you can sign up now, join in July, and earn over $25,000 for college while you serve America. Be all that you can be. Find out more about the new GI Bill and the new Army College Fund from your Army recruit. Find your future in the Army. Ow! The story of a remarkable boy and an extraordinary animal. Don't be this thing can talk. In a world that couldn't understand. Help! A Summer to Remember, Wednesday. One team will have its ticket punched for the final four next week in Lexington. 
Which will it be? Memphis State or Oklahoma? SMU is the host school today. They'll be hosting the Final Four next year here at Reunion, which is a tremendous basketball facility. And our thanks to Bob Hitch, their fine athletic director, and Dave Hart and Frank Windiger, the NCAA representatives on hand. Coming up next, Georgia Tech and Georgetown, the number one and number two seeds in the Eastern region. They'll fight it out after the conclusion of our game this afternoon from Providence. Bedford has come back into the game. So Lee has now gone out. It's 45-43 Memphis State. The Tigers have the ball with 11 minutes and 40 seconds to go. And Oklahoma in a 2-3 zone defense. Bailey has also come back into the game in the middle for Memphis State, the freshman. Again, Coach Dana Kirk trying to keep some height in there to maintain that rebounding advantage with Dwayne Bailey at 6'9 and William Bedford at 7 feet. MSU has really done the job on the boards out rebounding OU 27 to 21. Askew, the freshman, working the outside. Beckton takes the shot, does not get the bounce. We get a whistle and a foul called on Oklahoma, I believe, underneath. We're going to call it on Daryl Kennedy, number 30 in white. Daryl Kennedy picks up his second personal foul. Billy Tubbs, head coach of the Sooners. As I said earlier, you close your eyes and you listen to this guy and you swear you're listening to Jack Nicholson. He sounds so much like him. It's unbelievable. He talks about he likes an entertaining style of basketball, and he's an entertainer himself. Final Four is going to be rewarded by either of these two coaches because they're both outstanding coaches, great people. Steal by Oklahoma. Chance to tie for the Sooners. Ten minutes, 50 seconds left to play. Boy, have we seen some basketball here this week at Reunion. Two great games Thursday night. This one as close as it could be. Memphis State has now turned it over 17 times to Oklahoma's 10. Frank, there's something called the delayed break or the secondary break that I'll explain in a minute. Bowie with the miss, Johnson with the follow, and Bedford grabs the next one for Memphis State. The delayed break or the secondary break, if the initial shot is not there on the fast break, Again, if those forwards were to cross under the basket, usually a secondary opportunity will present itself. Oklahoma needs to do that. alley -oop to Bedford. I thought he threw it over the backboard. Boy, did he go up for that one. That ball had icicles when it came down, and only Bedford could go up that high to get it. Big basket for Memphis State. It puts him up by four. Kennedy with the open shot from the corner, drills it from 15. Darrell Kennedy has averaged better than 15 points per game and has been held to six so far. Once again, a two-point advantage for the Memphis State Tigers. Turner looking inside, Bailey in the high post, Bedford underneath the basket. Look how OU makes Memphis State's job a little easier. The guys do not have their hands up on defense. They've got to give them a target. Make it difficult, and they're making it very easy by not putting those hands up. Back-to-back -back slams by William Bedford on the alley-oop. One of the benefits of having your hands up on defense is visually you create an obstruction. Kennedy trying to get loose. Shot blocked by Bailey, and Bailey grabs it. And is fouled by Kennedy. Well, Frank talking about being corrected from what was stated at the top of the show. You asked me which bench did I give the nod to, and I gave it to Oklahoma. But take a look at this bench player here, 6'9", Dwayne Bailey. He comes up with a key block, hasn't scored many points, but he's done the job defensively as well as Willie Beckman doing the job offensively. Timeout Oklahoma with nine minutes and three seconds remaining. And Memphis State leading OU 49-45. This is Mr. Goodwrench. Did you know that your GM car's engine uses more air than gasoline? For every sip of gas, it takes 15 gulps of air. That's why a clean air filter helps keep you from wasting power or damaging your engine. So let Mr. Goodwrench check your oil, fuel, and air filters. Chances are you'll save gas and money, too. It's another of Mr. Goodwrench's good ways.
How would you like a family sedan improved by the engineers who designed Corvette? You're kidding. No, that's Celebrity Eurosport from today's Chevrolet. It's for people who love to drive. These engineers modified its steering, retuned its suspension, and turned it loose with smoother fuel-injected power. Like Corvette, Celebrity Eurosport is for people who love to drive. You're not kidding. Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. Live it. Chevy. Passion, scandal, danger. Jacqueline Bissett and Christopher Reeve prove there is no stronger love than one that is forbidden. Anna Karenina, Tuesday. With James Brown, Frank Lieber back at Reunion Arena. I think this illustrates the point you were making on the hands with Oklahoma. Again, look how easy it is. Nobody's got a hand up to get in the way of the seven-footer. Visually, you don't create an obstruction if you don't have your hands up. If you got a big guy like seven-footer William Bedford, you make it that much easier. And once again, it's interesting to see with one of their big guns on the bench and Keith Lee, Memphis State continues to keep it cooking. Say, so Coach Dana Kirk really has to be pleased with the kind of support that William Bedford has given him this year. Again, the second half of last season was what really helped Bedford's confidence. He's blossomed this year. What do you think Oklahoma needs to do now to get back in this game? Frank, I honestly believe they need to pick the tempo up and move the ball up and down the court. They don't have the same height across the front line as Memphis State, so therefore they have to exploit their quickness with an initial and a secondary break. Well, Keith Lee has been to the dance, although he's sitting this particular one out. But the question is, Tisdale, he's got some rebounds, but he hasn't been scoring. Give Memphis State's 2-3 zone a lot of credit for packing it in there, as well as Tisdale not moving quite as much as he needs to to get to the open areas on the defense. Tisdale has only nine points in the game so far. Turner, 16-footer, yes. That makes a point guard so dangerous. One of the reasons why a point guard not only must be able to run the show being a good quarterback, but he's got to be a dangerous offensive threat by being able to can at least four or five jumpers a game like uh, Andre Turner. McAllister looking inside to Tisdale, but he's got all kinds of blue shirts around him. Kennedy takes the shot, gets it. Daryl Kennedy drills it. 51-47. Ironically, Memphis State is 21 and 0 this year wearing their white shirts, but they had to wear blue today because the top seeded team gets to wear white in the tournament. First time they've had to wear the blue. Doesn't seem to bother Andre Turner. What kind of shirt he's wearing? Whenever Keith Lee is out of the game, Andre Turner automatically assumes more scoring responsibility, and that helps his overall game. That's an over and back violation against Oklahoma. Good call because when Daryl Kennedy left the backcourt, he was in the air, so therefore his feet officially were planted in the backcourt. He came down with it. Six-point lead for Memphis State. That's their biggest of the game. And thus far, Memphis State has out-rebounded Oklahoma 31-24. Nice pass from Turner going inside, but the shot is missed underneath. Only mistake that Dwayne Bailey made is he didn't have himself in a basketball-ready position to catch that ball to go straight up. He had to collect himself and then go down. Took too much time. Tisdale inside and really got hammered as he tried to go up for the shot. It will go against Andre Turner. That's his second. Again, take a look at Tisdale trying to go up strong. Boy, they've got a bunch of blue shirts packed around Tisdale wherever he goes emotionally. And confidence-wise, it would be awfully nice for Oklahoma if Tisdale could get involved in the offense by them pushing the ball up. They really need his scoring. The team foul situation, Memphis has six. Oklahoma has five. So in Memphis fouls from here on in, Oklahoma will have benefit of the bonus. Oklahoma has one to give. Inside, Kennedy with the reverse. Daryl Kennedy, I mentioned before how he reminds me so much of Adrian Dantley at 6'5". He's extremely effective inside, playing a lot taller than that 6'5 frame. Four-point lead for Memphis State, just under seven minutes. Who will it be in Lexington next week for the Final Four? Memphis State or Oklahoma to represent the Midwest region. They were seated first and second, and they have come to this final game. Neither club in recent years has been there. Neither coach has ever coached in a Final Four. Andre Turner didn't like the look he saw on the right-hand side, so he went around to Bedford's side. Again, Bedford is the better choice offensively of he and Bailey. A steal by Kennedy. Turner trying to catch him. 
Kennedy with a tremendous slam. Lion slam by Daryl Kennedy. The only comment for that one. Uh. Oklahoma now within two points, and the Sooner fans are going nuts here at Reunion. And the man-to-man -man defense of Oklahoma is helping to pick the pace up. They're trying to force the tempo with the man defense. Memphis State now protecting a two-point advantage. They've led throughout here in the second half. We were tied at halftime at 33. Five minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Now, if there's any time that David Johnson, number 55 of OU, wants to play fronting defense, he needs to do it now in front of 6'9", Dwayne Bailey. Don't allow him to catch the ball on the inside. When do you think they'll come back with Lee? I'm thinking about the five-minute mark. At the five-minute mark, they will bring Keith Lee back. Now, they're about 20 seconds away. Turner takes it back outside. Askew, the freshman. Turner, the junior, working in the backcourt. Bailey, a freshman. minutes and counting and again when the forwards catch the ball they're not even looking to the basket and I certainly would expect coach Dana Kirk to give uh, Keith Lee the nod in a very few seconds you see Kirk on his feet over there watching the action very closely just behind his point guard Andre Turner well the OU fans don't like it Four and a half minutes left to one of these teams' season. Again, important for Oklahoma not to get careless on the defensive end. Don't go into a mental sleep right now. First, you go all season with a clock, and now you're in the tournament without a clock. You wonder sometimes how a delay game will work. So far, Memphis State's done pretty well. Ask you. He is 6'5", a freshman, and played point guard in high school. Well, Coach Kirk waited till the four-minute mark before he gave Keith Lee the signal. You may see Lee getting up off the bench, and he's going to check back into the game. So it looked like Kirk was just trying to run off some time to get it down to four minutes to the point where he could put Lee back in the game. Timeout in Dallas. It was Sarah's birthday, but she didn't think her daddy would make it. His work never seemed to let up, and his office wasn't exactly built for speed. But lately, he'd been doing something about it. He brought in Team Xerox. With Xerox memory writers, personal computers, and printers that helped his people work together more productively and his work get out faster. Team Xerox not only got his office up to snuff, but gave him one very important side benefit. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Live today's Chevrolet with Cavalier. Fly the coupe, pop the top, the look is trim, thrills nonstop. Today's Cavalier has the electronic fuel-injected power and front drive you're looking for, plus an interior that comforts your very soul. Pick the Cavalier that fits your life and live it. Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. Live it. Chevy. As tight as it could be here at Reunion Arena with the Memphis State Tigers leading the Oklahoma Sooners 53 to 51 in the Midwest Regional Final. Four minutes, one second left to play. The big men have really done the job for Memphis State. Bedford and Lee have scored 14 of Memphis State's 20 second half points. And in terms of what's been hurting Oklahoma, they had the outside shot working well for them in the first half. Frank Anthony Bowie had eight in the first half. He has nothing in the second half. On the next possession, the jump ball arrow right now is pointing in favor of Oklahoma. Should that become a factor? The foul situation. Oklahoma is in the one and one the rest of the way. And the Sooners have one foul to give. And as we mentioned, Keith Lee back in the lineup, ball knocked out of bounds. It will belong to Memphis State. Now with Lee back in there, you think they'll still slow it down? No, I think they're going to look to go inside to one of the two big men. Coach Dana Kirk has his best offensive unit in there now with William Bedford and Keith Lee. They'll probably work opposite sides of the floor. Boyd came back into the game. One freshman for another, and Askew comes out. Coach Kirk was looking for better ball handling by bringing Boyd in and taking Beckton out. Of course, Beckton instead of Askew, you're right. Turner. 
Memphis State leading by two. They've been sitting on the ball since a little over five minutes left to play. Keith Lee inside over Johnson. Does not get it. They bat it around, and Bedford and Lee, who form a pretty good volleyball team on that offensive board, control it. And Andre Turner has the option to go on to either side of the floor, as I mentioned, with either Keith Lee on one side or William Bedford on the other. Askew guarded by Kennedy. Inside to Lee. Double teamed. Lee passes off to Bedford. A whistle and a foul on Tisdale. Now, Lee and Bedford are starting to work a little better together as we take a look at Wayman Tisdale to pick that foul up. As Keith Lee got the ball down low on the blocks, he had two or three men around him. Bedford moved to the open area, and Lee wisely was looking for him to hit him with the pass. We mentioned that Oklahoma had one more foul to give, and that was it. From now on, both sides are in the one and one the rest of the way. For Tisdale, his third personal foul. Turner working outside against Bowie, trying to protect a two-point lead. Boyd, the freshman, almost loses it to ask you another freshman. When Boyd gets the ball, McAllister drops off of him. Boyd has got to make himself a threat by at least looking at the basket. Look at the basket. There you go. Now bring the defense to you. Lee trying to post up inside against Johnson, and Bedford trying to post up against Tisdale. Don't forget, coming up next, Georgetown and Georgia Tech for the Eastern Regional title. Inside, Keith Lee. Too long, and the rebound to Tisdale. Here comes OU with a chance to tie. Give the Sooners a lot of credit for playing good defense. One of the knocks against them is that they don't play good D. Excellent defense that time. Tisdale has not scored a basket in 15 minutes. And Bowie's shot. Flats is off the rim. It will belong to Memphis State. And Oklahoma pleading for the foul call that doesn't come. Wayman Tisdale's last basket was with 17 minutes and 9 seconds left to play in the game. We now have 2 minutes and 29 seconds left to play in the contest. Tisdale has 9 points. Oklahoma has a timeout. They trail by 2. Detailed studies of the human body, biomedical research, computer-aided design, Two years and countless clay models, trying different shapes, new materials, doing it over, again and again, all to design a more comfortable, durable seat for General Motors cars and trucks. Leonardo would have loved it. Nobody sweats the details like GM. United States. Chicago. Los Angeles. Boston, Massachusetts. United Airlines can take you to the Far East from more U.S. cities than any other airline. United Airlines to Tokyo and to Hong Kong. Fly a friend to the Far East. You're not just flying. Mei Li. Kalila, Ohio. You're flying the friendly skies. Lieber with James Brown in Dallas. The timeout situation is Memphis State leads by two. Each club has two timeouts left. And you see the time remaining, two minutes and 29 seconds. Once again, the possession arrow is in favor of Oklahoma if we get down to a hell ball. Keith Lee thus far, 11 rebounds. Tisdale has 11 rebounds. Coming up next, Georgetown and Georgia Tech. Lee, however, has outscored Tisdale 17 to 9. Full court pressure by Oklahoma. Turner passing off to Lee. Lee has his pass blocked. Gets it away to Boyd just in time to get it across the 10 second line to Bedford. Like Bedford gave up a relatively easy shot there. Well, actually, it was a smart play because they're up by two. Put Fouls on Bowie. It was a good play by him. Second foul on Anthony Bowie. So Memphis State's strategy is to try to put it in the deep freeze. And they've been successful protecting a two-point lead. They went into the delay game at the orders of their head coach, Dana Kirk, with just over five minutes left to play in the game. Billy Tubbs. Got to be a little concerned right now. Two-point ball game. And Turner on the free throw line, a 73% free throw shooter. Misses a big one on the front end of the one and one. And Oklahoma with a chance to tie it. 
Well, you've heard the athletic expression, you've got to hurry up with patience on the offensive end if you're OU. They forced the shot the last time down the court by Bowie. They turn it over again. Keith Lee comes up with a turnover, and Oklahoma retreats on defense. Now, the only enemy that Memphis State has to worry about now is the clock. That's why the ball is in Andre Turner's hands. Turner is the, the real glue of this basketball team. He's the one man they can't lose. Boy, driving the paint, passes off. Lee with the left-handed layup. Great pass from the freshman boy. A minute 25. Memphis State by four. Four points away from Lexington. And now two as Bowie answers for Oklahoma. Anthony Bowie gets his fifth basket. Timeout with a minute 15 to go. A good timeout call, Frank, for Oklahoma to give Billy Tuff's players a chance to refresh their legs. If you're Oklahoma, I've got to believe you've got to exercise a full court press to try and force a turnover. They've got the quicker squad. Now, if you're Memphis State, as I mentioned before, the clock is the only opponent that you want to work against to try to run as much time off. And Oklahoma, rather, Memphis State, of course, wants the ball in the hands of Andre Turner. All right, let's take a look at who you would foul right now. Figuring Memphis State has got the basketball uh, coming back. And in terms of free throw shooting percentage, Askew, just a freshman, 64%. Bedford, the seven-footer, hitting only 66%. Boyd, a freshman, hitting only 66%. So the only two guys you really want to stay away from are Lee and Turner. And Boyd has been playing intermittently. You'd probably want to go to him because of his freshman status. Oklahoma, not a bad free throw shooting team, but David Johnson, of course, has the worst looking statistics of the bunch there, so he'd be the man that you want to go to. Uh, Memphis State, obviously, going to try to run some more time off that clock, draw the foul, and then it may be free throws that make the difference. Will Keith Lee get a shot at the final four in his last effort? What a great career he's had. He has put Memphis State basketball on the map with an outstanding four years. It's been because of Lee that they've been able to draw the caliber of players that they have right now. Two of the top five teams in the nation fighting it out with a minute 15 remaining. Each team has hit seven out of 11 from the free throw line. Oklahoma, as you can see, one timeout left. And Memphis State has two. And it will be full court pressure by the Sooners as Memphis State inbounds. Bedford to throw it in. Going to Lee at the free throw line. Memphis State has led the entire second half. And McAllister will pick up his fourth personal foul. Tim McAllister. And will move down to the free throw line on the other end. And it will be Lee going to the line, one of their best free throw shooters. So you got an official's timeout here, do a little floor mopping. A little maintenance work here before we go back to work. With a minute and 11 seconds left in this game, and Memphis State leading 53 to 55. Last time this game was tied was at halftime, but it was 33 all. So many people have talked about whether or not Keith Lee has the real intensity to go out there and play consistently night after night up to the level that he's capable of, but he's just a very low-key kind of an individual. You won't find him being as vocal as others, but believe me, he's a competitor. James, you're from Washington. How about a word on Georgia Tech and Georgetown? Frank, I think that's going to be one of the very best tests that Georgetown will face this year. Georgia Tech not only has that big front line that will really give Patrick Ewing a challenge, but they've also got an excellent point guard in Mark Price who handles the ball and is intelligent. Ought to be a nice matchup. I don't know what it is that uh, is on the floor, but obviously it's taken them some time to get it cleared off. Time remains out with a minute and 11 seconds to go, and now we'll move to the Memphis State free throw line. Keith Lee. There's an interesting stat. Though his free throw shooting statistic is 77% on the year, that dips to 63% in the last four minutes. One out of one from the line today. 19 points, 11 rebounds. 
There's no hesitation with that stroke. That's a three-point lead. Dana Kirk at his chair for one of the few times in the game. Memphis State by four with a minute 11. Bowie going cross court. Kennedy. Bedford going up, and they're going to call goaltending on Bedford. The basket by Kennedy will go, so it's a two-point game with 59 seconds left. It certainly wasn't because Bedford didn't get it in time. He got the ball well before it reached his peak. Had to be because it was against the backboard. Turner back to Lee, who's got trouble in the backboard, and is fouled by Linwood Davis. So again, it will be Keith Lee going to the free throw line. Again, still not bad fouls on the part of Oklahoma. They're getting the clock to stop, even though they're fouling on the game a 77% free throw shooter. You pointed out what Lee's free throw shooting percentage was in the last five minutes. But again, still not bad because OU got the clock to stop. They've already retired this young man's jersey at Memphis State. His wife, by the way, is a former point guard for Memphis State, so you know who runs that situation, right? <laughs> so he'd be able to point out deficiencies in his game. Has he got a good stroke? No doubt about it. Excellent backspin. You talked about Keith Lee's jersey being retired, along with that of Ronnie Robinson and the young man who's on the bench, the assistant coach, Larry Finch, one heck of a ball player in his day. Lee has hit four straight free throws. And again, Memphis State with a four-point advantage. 50 seconds. Kennedy in the front court. McAllister inside to David Johnson. Johnson is short. Johnson gets his own rebound and is fouled by Bedford, and he is out of here. Frank, you talked about, in terms of David Johnson's build, him having that wide and strong rear end. That's one of the things that helped him in that crowd that time in traffic. That big body of his, he spread the defense out. That foul, may I correct myself, the foul was on Turner and not on Bedford. That would have been Bedford's fifth personal foul. And it looked like as if both Bedford and Turner had a piece of David Johnson. Now Johnson, as we mentioned before, is Oklahoma's poorest free throw shooter, getting only 60% for the year. And this Oklahoma. timeout won't, this timeout won't help his confidence either. Timeout Memphis State 40 seconds left to play 59 55 Tigers. If you expect an engine to start quick work hard and last long remember the easiest job a Briggs & Stratton engine will ever do is mow your lawn. Ask for Briggs & Stratton, the power in power equipment. Welcome back to Reunion Arena. Time remaining 40 seconds. Memphis State with a four-point advantage. The possession arrow in favor of Oklahoma. And the timeouts remaining, each team has one. Memphis State has won, and Oklahoma has won. And one team 40 seconds away from being eliminated, the other team 40 seconds away from Lexington, provided we don't go into an overtime period. Thursday night, the Oklahoma game went into overtime with Louisiana Tech. And of course, Memphis State's game with Boston College went right down to the wire. David Johnson is two out of four from the free throw line and Billy Tubbs the head coach of the Sooners looking on big eight coach of the year last two years got the great bounce did he get the bounce <laughs> he knew it because his whole torso bent over big side relief makes them both couple of clutch free throws from a 60 percent free throw shooter they immediately Pull Johnson out and pull the smaller man, Linwood Davis, in. Two-point lead, Memphis State. Turner. Down court driving. Turner lays it up. Scores! <laughs> Memphis State by four. Tisdale inside with the turnaround again. Goaltending on Bedford. That's only 11 points for Tisdale. 
Two-point lead. 26 seconds to go. Bedford to inbound. Gets it into Turner. And Turner is fouled by Linwood Davis. Not a good decision by Bedford on the last block shot. And as far as Memphis State is concerned, you can understand why they want the ball in the hands of Andre Turner. Here comes Johnson back in. Billy Tubbs doing a little situation substitution here. But I tell you, Andre Turner, as cool as he is under pressure, he seems to live for these kinds of situations. Turner with 10 points and 12 assists, but he's 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Oklahoma averaging 90 a game has been held to 59 by Memphis State's defense. Nothing but the bottom of the net. <laughs> and a little hybrid high five there, a little light touch. So that puts Memphis State on the odd number as Baskerville Holmes comes into the game. Great leaper. Gets them both. Memphis State by four, under 20 seconds. Kennedy with the jumper. Yes. And Oklahoma will use its last timeout with 13 seconds remaining. The Sooners use the final timeout. They are down by two. Memphis State will have the basketball and will try to run off the last 13 seconds. Although I'm sure Oklahoma will go for the steal on the inbounds and failing that they will foul almost immediately have to be impressed with the fact that Oklahoma is not keeling over they're displaying a never say die attitude and those outside shooters are coming through they recognize this is it they've got to put forth every bit of effort now well the Sooners their seventh NCAA appearance their third under their coach Billy Tubbs we got a front line that averages 55 points a game but a great defensive job by Memphis State today, particularly on Wayman Tisdale, who has not been a big factor. Now, again, if you're Oklahoma, certainly Billy Tubbs is talking about this right now. Who are you going to foul? Again, depending upon who's in the game, you take a look at the stats there. There's no doubt that Askew, which 64% will be the one that you want to foul, not only statistically, but again, because he's a freshman and you might have... You might have the pressure situation working to your advantage if you're Oklahoma because he is a freshman. You might be able to rattle him a little bit. Well, Daryl Kennedy has scored 12 of his 16 points in the second half of this one. And that has really kept Oklahoma in the ballgame since Tisdale has been below par offensively. Now, knowing that Memphis State wants the ball in the hands of Andre Turner, it's going to be important defensively that Oklahoma try to force it such that the ball gets in the hands of Askew. And if we do have the hell ball, the arrow, as you saw, pointing in Oklahoma's direction. Again, Bedford to inbound. They've got Boyd in there, Lee is in there, Turner is in there. And they get it in the hands of Turner. That's the man they want to have the basketball. Andre Turner is fouled by McAllister, and Oklahoma is claiming that Turner turned the ball over. They may have had a good case. When Turner catches the ball, watch as he goes over towards the sideline, and looks like he definitely does have a high dribble and will turn the ball over. Look very close, and of course, you know the Oklahoma bench is going to try to help the official with the call. The OU bench screaming in that case for the turnover. And they didn't get it. And Turner will go to the line and can pretty well wrap this thing up by sinking two free throws. One and one opportunity with eight seconds to go. Turner two out of four from the free throw line. He missed his first two attempts and hit his last two just a moment ago. Once again, David Johnson will come back into the game for Oklahoma. Billy Tubbs kind of shaking his head. Might have seen it all go out the window there with the failure to call the possible violation on Andre Turner. Keep in mind, Oklahoma doesn't have any timeouts left, so they're going to have to push it down the floor quickly should he miss. Which he does. Tisdale. Oklahoma needs two to tie. Three seconds. Bowie puts it up. 
There's the buzzer. Memphis State wins. They're on their way to Lexington. second half and hang on for dear life to beat Oklahoma 63 to 61 to become the first team to qualify for next week's final four Dana Kirk throwing a kiss to whoever upstairs he's got to be a happy man he is in his first final four and a great job by Kirk in utilizing his personnel despite the foul problems early by Bedford and also by Keith Lee and it is the Tigers who will be on their way to Lexington. Andre Turner, once again, a very, very key factor in this game. James Brown and I'll be back shortly with some interviews with the Memphis State Wildcats right now. Let's go back to Dick Stockton in New York.